This is Boxing Tickets and I we are delighted to be joined with uh, the public nuisance Sean McComb. How are you, Sean? All good. I, I was good. me and you talk constantly obviously about football. Um have you sort of have you, you sort of on the come down from obviously the Real Madrid game last night? What a match. What a match. Um serious, serious. Do you know what I was saying there, lads <clears throat> in our group chat they says what I reckon I says I can't get goals in this game three each. They're all texting me this morning for saying, fuck me, why did you not back up for? Why did you not do it? I was just like, I just said, I thought it would be plenty of goals. Um, and there was, was so much. Mystic Mac. Yeah, uh, this is it. Mystic Mac. It's, it's not only that. You obviously Mystic Mac on, obviously, when we done our last interview in the SSE, obviously, after you beat Sam Maxwell, you sort of said, I want fight that's going to propel me towards world titles. I want Paro, I want Barbosa. Mystic Mac worked the treat. You know, obviously you're ten days out from from. Uh, say, I just put a post up where he says the the biggest fight of obviously your life as a professional so far. Like these are the opportunities you're in boxing for. Yeah, exactly it. Um, you, know, I've worked my whole life, um, at a high level, going up and and it's all paid off. This is what you put your life into something, and and you want them to turn. You know what I mean? It's people. Most most fighters to compete at an, an elite la- at an elite level from early on as an amateur probably, in fact, not probably they do they sacrifice, um, education and and time with family and everyone else. So in return, you want to get something out of it through all that sacrifice of education, everything else, and a win here will just will make it all worthwhile. So yeah, these are the fights you want. It's I guess you know when sort of people seen that obviously your fight fell through in January on on the Conlon matchroom card obviously in the Ulster Hall you're sort of going you know you sacrificed Christmas you know you didn't have Christmas you obviously you're about to get married in a few months you have a young child you sort of sacrificed some of your own Christmas they then obviously have to pull out through sickness and injury like I guess when people sort of looked at it there they're going Sean's missed the boat he's missed an opportunity but it's it's actually worked to your advantage you've. You know, if you'd have probably fought in January, you wouldn't have had this fight with Barbosa. So it's actually worked out in your favour. Yeah, hundred percent. You just had to, you just had to keep the the faith that obviously I I, I was got it that I didn't make the fight in January, but it was the right decision through injury and through illness. I was sick for five or six days. I was never going to be hundred percent. Still confident that I would win, but I wasn't fully confident that I would perform. At the level I have been the last five, six fights. And um I had a chat with Lee and a chat with, with Pete. Lee had told me, Look, don't worry, we're, we're gonna work towards big fights. I'll get you a fight before your uh, wedding. Don't worry, we will get you a fight before your wedding. And and I put all my faith in Lee and Lee came through at the other end and, and he's delivered. And I can't I, I'm just very grateful for it and very, very thankful to have someone like Lee and my team and in my corner. And and fucking coming through with what he's saying he's going to do, you know what I mean? And that 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 just that makes the team because I know people always say in back professional boxing to have to surround yourself for a good team. I just believe that if, if this I can't get any better now, that's it. I've got Pete, who I fully trust in in my corner and tactics and technically, I just believe he's the best coach in the world. I've got Lee Eaton, who I again I just put all my faith in that he'll follow through with with big names and big fights and. And, and going by what he's done so far, that's exactly what he's done. And I have trust in myself and my ability to, to perform on them stages. So it's a great team around us. Does, does, you know, when you're sort of saying there, when you have a team like that, that, that obviously takes the worries away. You know, it, you're a fighter, you're you're paid to fight sort of thing. So that saves you from obviously having to, to think of anything else. When you have a manager that's that's getting you the big fights, you have a coach that's getting you in your very best shape. Like that, that just bodes well for you, obviously, coming into the fight to go, all I need to do is focus on getting on a plane and obviously going and fighting. That's that's a perfect setup for you. Yeah, 100%. It's just that's what I mean. It takes all the headaches away and all I, all I got to do is what I got. All I got to do is what a boxer should be doing and just boxing and performing. And that's it. Barclays Center, obviously, it's it's sort of it's a mixed bag for us probably over the last while. Obviously, we Carl Frampton beat Leo Santa Cruz for world title. Katie Taylor's fought there. Obviously, more recently with Dennis Hogan, and I can't remember who the other one was. Dennis Hogan and someone else fought. So it's sort of two two. It's sort of finally balanced. But when you sort of look at the top echelons of obviously Irish boxing, they've obviously fought there. So 
like Barclays Center obviously has probably been a dream probably for you for, for quite a long time to sort of to fight there. Yeah, well, I mean, I believe just any anywhere on the big stage has always been a dream for me. Um, to go on that big stage and perform, um, especially stateside in the USA, it's like that's what that's what kids dream of. Do you know what I mean? Fighting on these big, massive, global um shows and and being a part of it. Not not very many Irish fighters can say they've experienced that, and and I'll 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 be able to say that and come out the other end of it with a win as well, which then puts me back on that global stage again for hopefully a world title. It's the super lightweight division's buzzing at the moment. You know, it's it really seems to be there's obviously big fight after big fight. Obviously, your your co main event, they obviously Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. You know, you've Jack Catterall and Josh Taylor coming up. You've Liam Paro, um, obviously fighting. Um, in June as well, like it's like the big fight after big fight there, and it seems to be where super lightweight was probably in the past, but probably people want like it's sort of you know the people move divisions and stuff, it sort of slows down, but it seems to be thriving at the moment. All the big fights seem to be at one forty. Yeah, well, it's the most popular. It's definitely the most popular uh, weight class at the moment, I believe. Anyway, um, all the big names and. And all the big and, and and as you say, a lot of people's moved off from lightweight, and you've got you still have names that are at lightweight that could still potentially move up. Shakur Stevenson, um, Davis, Tank Davis, stuff like that. They can come to and from. You know what I mean? And like, obviously, big fight can be made easy, very easily made. Like you know what I mean? You like between lightweight and super lightweight, the, the names is unbelievable. You've got. Lomachenko, I'm sure if he was given an opportunity at 140, he would take it. Davis, if he was given an opportunity at 140, he would take it. Shakur Stevenson would take it. And you've got Davin Haney, Progre, Matthias, Liam Paro, Arnold Barbosa, Sean McComb, Josh Taylor, Jack Carroll. It just goes on and on. I mean, if these fights could just happen every every few months, we could all just fight each other. It's I guess for you it's sort of it's having to keep the blinkers on. Obviously, would would you sort of when you look at Arnold Barbosa, would you sort of see similarities? Obviously, in the way that you know the, the two he's fight, like sort of what what way are you preparing yourself? Obviously, for you know Barbosa probably hasn't met someone as slick as you, um, and probably maybe vice versa in some ways. Would you see some similarities between the two of these? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we know exactly what he does well, and I'm sure he'll know exactly what I do well. Um, If he's watched me and, and he's got a good team around him, he, he's got great feet and great hands. He, he he has a great way of getting to him from distance with his feet um, without falling short, you know what I mean? So it's up to me to exploit that. And and obviously we that's part of our tactics is to just to keep him busy and to keep him thinking. And they keep him, keep him on his toes, and we'll never know until we're in the ring. It's okay, wasn't well, and saying what he does well, but you'll never know until you actually tame all that stuff in the ring, and uh, put a full game plan together in there. It has to work in there, and you have to make it work in there. Um, and and I'm sure it's face versa for him. He'll have to he'll have to figure me out. Yes, we, we there is similarities in terms of we both have good feet, we both have good movement, lateral movement. Um, we both pick pick our punches very well, and uh, it's going to be a great fight. And 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 I truly believe it's going to be a better fight than the main event. That that's what you you want to have that statement. Sort of everybody goes away from the Barclays Center, or obviously from watching on his own pay per view and going, did did he see Sean McCombs? Fight Sean McCombs incredible rather than thinking of Hayden Garcia. That's what you want as a fighter. You want people to go away from there talking because not only does that obviously help in the fact of, of obviously a, a fight there with Teofimo Lopez, but obviously it then leads the promoters going, Whoa, Sean, Sean McCombs, we need to get him signed up. Yeah, 100%. As I say, like performance is going to be key to the opening the door for, for, for more opportunity. So I just gotta stay focused on what I have to do, and and I'll just do what I I I normally do, and 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 enjoy the show and a relaxed performance, and just just keep ticking the boxes every round, and then I'm sure that it's not my job to tell people to talk or to have people talking about me. I, I just have to do it if they whether they like it or not. I just have to perform the way I perform, 
But if I if I do perform the way I normally perform and the way I've been sparring and the way I've been putting the last like eighteen months of my career, the way I've performed the last eighteen months, every fight's been exciting. And and I'm sure people will, will see that themselves anyway. Tyrone McKenna obviously was linked to Barbosa previously, so I guess it's not you know, it's sort of not a name, it's sort of new. I think obviously when the fight was announced, I sort of said to Tyrone, like Obviously, he, he was close to getting that fight sort of last year or the year before. Obviously, you're getting the fight now, so he's sort of having to live through your moments. And obviously, for Sean and Mark, they obviously they upset Barboza and, and bring home the big one. But I think Sean, I think Tyrone will sort of be talking in your ears during the fight going, do this, do this, sort of. But, you know, I guess it's not a name that's new to you because you knew that Tyrone was previously there. So you probably studied a lot of Barboza. Yeah, well, I've, I've known who he is anyway, even before Toronto knew that he was, because, he, he, I mean, he's a great record, and I know he was always looking for that world title fight, which first, I don't know why he hasn't got it yet, Um, because he's been number one for, with WBO for quite a while now, but, um, yeah, he, he's, I mean, I, I'd be familiar enough with him and, and, and how he's performed, and I'm just, like, again, it's not someone I pay too much attention to because they have my own fights going on, and, my own career to look at and again it's just one of them ones that obviously I wanted a fight of that calibre so I always kept an eye of it I've kept an eye on the top 10 as soon as I broke into the top 10 with WBO after winning the European title and stuff I watched the round and I was like who could I fight who could I potentially fight here so I've always kept an eye on most of the top 10 and and uh and now that it's happened it's just like happy days happy days that I've, I've done my homework prior to even getting any of these fights and and I couldn't have asked for a better opponent. You're obviously your form, Sean. I think the only man that's in better form than you at the moment is obviously Phil Foden. Um, but, but obviously your form, you know, like I looking through the last, and I think I put this up recently, your last four fights, like Ozadan, 23-0-1, Casey Benjamin, 16-2-1, Moya, 17-0. Uh, I think Moya was 17 and 0, maybe. I think when you fought him, yeah, 17 and 0, yeah. I think just with it, box rec sometimes, and obviously Sam Maxwell as well. Like, you're on quite a quite obviously a good bit of form. Probably, it'd fairly say every fight, obviously, after the Gwyn fight, obviously, performances, obviously, you'd Ronnie Clark couldn't lay a glove on you in Ulster Hall. Like, you know, that link up with Pete, you know, it's, it's getting better and better and better as each fight goes on. And, you know, this, this gravy train's not stopping. Yeah, exactly. It just as as I said earlier, I've got a great team around me, and I've got great camps in, and I'm getting plenty of good sparring with all the lads in Dublin, and and we all just keep pushing each other on. You know what I mean? And for me, it's just I've always been good. I've always been like even against Gavin Gwynn, I was like I probably wasn't even losing the fight at the stage where it was stopped. But I mean, obviously, based on my what I've learned from them. And how to perform and, and how to pace myself and and how to how to how to treat my mental side of things going on their feet. Everything's all just it's, it's I've learned a lot from it and I've just I'm, I'm, and I don't even need to like explain how because my performances have shown how and why. Do you know what I mean? It's just I've learned from it. I've put it behind me, I've pushed on and, and here we are now. The, obviously the, the zone schedule obviously and you know I've been sort of trying to think back and the when when an Irish fighter hasn't been on a on a big card sort of like you're probably nearly having to go back probably as far back as October you know Katie Taylor and Cameron and in, in November you'd obviously uh, Mick in December Lewis Crocker and in, in January um, February obviously we have party out in obviously Orlando um, obviously yourself now next week on the zone under the catch, obviously, next month. Like, it just seems to be that we're waiting, obviously. I know we've, we've obviously had big wins and stuff there, but we're looking for the big one, you know. And and obviously, next next week, you could start that, obviously, with Anto, um, obviously, fighting Joe Cardina in, in five weeks afterwards. So, like, what a what a time to be involved in Irish boxing when the zone's given such a big profile to everybody. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of what, what we were lacking, isn't it? Irish boxing was lacking the TV and the big exposure. We've always had the talent. We've always had the, the personalities and we've always had the, the great fighters coming through. Um, and, and right now at the minute, because of these opportunities, um, 
it's encouraging probably people to turn pro as well. Because they, they they almost feel like they'll get that opportunity. Like, look at Kurt Walker the other night on the zone as well. He was fantastic. And and it just goes to show you the caliber of, of fighters we have in this small island. And if the zone keep bringing the goods and giving us our time on TV, then it's only going to do good for Irish boxing. And, and, the, and the top amateurs that we have are going to be encouraged to turn pro. Um, whereas before, it was a it was a wee bit of a him and or like people him and Hammond to go pro because of not getting that TV exposure or that opportunity, and uh, they're on the big funding down south and stuff, so the money wasn't great. And but now with with the zone coming in and giving these opportunities, it's it's given people a bit of vision and a bit of something to look forward to. Going, you know what? I can get these fights and I can get on the zone and 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 it's it's just gonna be it's gonna be great for Irish boxing and, and young fighters. You you always said your first taste obviously coaching obviously with professionals obviously you were in Jared Hughes's corner obviously in the Ulster Hall um obviously Pete was away the Jared Hughes obviously sung your praises is not you probably needed your praises sung any more than they were but they're obviously saying that your IQ was obviously on the next level obviously I don't want to think too far ahead sort of because you've still a long time left in in professional boxing but is the coaching sort of something you'd like to go into afterwards with the IQ that people saying you have. Yeah, well, anyway, I'll go into coaching when I retire. Like, probably, I'll, and I do, I did have a wee thing going on there in Holy Trinity, um, where I was coaching the kids every Monday. Obviously, I've got my own gym as well, um, which is which is time consuming out of camp, but I was able to sacrifice a Monday night and go up and take the kids in Holy Trinity. But that's something I'll definitely get into after boxing when I, when I have that wee bit more free time is. Going to voluntary work and Holy Trinity as an amateur coach, um, before maybe give, give a couple of years to add and just see where we end up. Maybe when the other, maybe when the professional boxing, I'm not sure, but I'll definitely give a few years to Holy Trinity anyway as a voluntary coach. It, it's something that obviously everybody's sort of done down through the years in Holy Trinity. Obviously, you still see a lot of, of former fighters in, and it just seemed to be something that's ingrained that. It's not that it's something you even have to think about. It's something you'll do naturally. You're always going to be coaching because someone helped you on your way up, you know, so you're carrying that trend on. Yeah, well, it's the least you can do. Like, Mickey Hawkins has is, is given his life to our club and, and all the kids in the area. And he like he's given plenty and plenty of kids opportunities in Turf Lodge and, and even now more so, like, wider areas, way beyond Belfast, Glen Gormley, if... I mean, like so, it's it's an it's an open club to everyone, and 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 I would like to do the same. I just feel like it's it's it shows great character, and it just shows like how much um how much joy people get out of helping other people, and 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 I I feel the same. I feel when I help other people and and give people an opportunity, it's it's a good feeling. I guess people's going to be thinking now, obviously, the ring walk for next week. Obviously, we've seen during lockdown, you sort of had, had obviously a few different, obviously, ring walk ideas when you're on a card of that magnitude. You know, do, do you have anything sort of planned that's flamboyant? Sort of, I know you've done the bird as a word. You've sort of, you wore your shorts back to front the last day out in the SSE. Have uh-huh. you anything planned sort of for the Barclays Center next week? Or is it just nah, I haven't like, even considered it, to be honest. I haven't even considered it one bit. I haven't at all. And, I don't really care anymore. I used to like her with it, have a bit of crack. No, I've seen it. I don't even care. There's no like because I'm just. I feel like the last sort of months have just been so focused on my performance. Um, nothing else really matters. Like I don't want to put any fucking time and effort in the ring walk that means jack shit to me. Like when I'm in the ring, you know what I mean. So obviously I'll I'll pick a song that that makes me feel good, but I haven't I haven't really thought much about it yet to be honest. It'll probably be an Irish song, to be honest, so I'll just take it from her. I guess you've still got 10 days, sort of, until you, you make that ring walk as well. So there's, I guess there's plenty of time. You'll be on that flight on the way over in a few days. You'll be sort of going, like, what should I do? You know, something will come up. Yeah, out of the it. Does it always that's happen? another thing as well. I haven't got much time to actually sit down and think about what I what I want to listen to or what I want to... Or, uh, like, I'm in Dublin. I'm up and down from Dublin every day. I'm coming home and I'm doing a second session or I'm in the gym or I'm looking after the chair. I'm busy, I like that. I like that lifestyle of being busy and not having much time to sit about thinking. So maybe when I get over there and have a bit of time to myself and 
in between sessions or on the flight, I'll, I'll have a wee think about it then. But right now, nothing sticks out. I guess if City obviously do the good at Real Madrid next week, you maybe come out the blue moon on Saturday night. Oh, well, well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> could, could, could be done. <laughs> um, obviously, a win next Saturday night, I guess it probably goes hand in hand. But obviously, you know, a win next week propels you to, you know, you, you become that mandatory for obviously Teofimo Lopez. Like, when you obviously you're here and that and the new next week, is that's sort of that's everything you've wanted in boxing, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. That hundred percent. You get that stage. You get that. You get that platform, and you just like I'm here now. Oh, like I wouldn't put. I, I trust myself to get this win. I, if I was given an opportunity to put anyone else in my position to get that win, I wouldn't do it. I would take myself because I'm. I'm just. I'm very confident, and I'm very uh, like the trust that I have within my team. As again, I'm going to keep t- going back on. It's just like. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. I know I can do it technically. I know I can do it tactically. And I just know I've, I've got all the attributes to get to that level. And I know I've got the attributes to win at that level. Definitely. Well, listen, Sean, obviously, I'll thank you very much for your time. Obviously, I know you're only 10 days out now. Um, obviously, a lot of people's not going to get there to the fight. But but obviously, you know that I'll be plugging it day in, day out, obviously, and where it's at. Um, obviously, go well in the, the Barclays Centre in Brooklyn. And no doubt, obviously, everybody back home will be written for the win um, next Saturday night. 100%. This is all, right. all about. Cheers, Sean. Thanks very much for your time. Happy birthday. Thank Cheers, you, Take love. care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye.